everyone, it's me, Colleen Ballinger. This is my baby, Flynn, and this is not my daughter, even though she maybe looks like it because she's much younger than me. This is Molly Burke. <laughs> I also like look 15, even though I'm 25, so. <laughs> it does look like I'm the mom sitting here with my two children about to we do have a video. An age gap. <laughs> Molly just babysat Flynn. She completely mommed Flynn. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. We are going to do just kind of like a sit down. Originally, I thought we should do like a mukbang and do this, Ooh. but I feel like the food would get in the way of all of the things I want to say. That's the problem with those it's like I'm like uh, how do, I don't want to talk with my mouth full right but I don't want to leave all the silent chewing time yes that's the worst I feel part. like there's an art to them I, I don't have that skill we'll just leave it to Trisha <laughs> and we will just talk without food in our mouths Molly is legally blind she is going to tell me everything about being blind today can I already correct you yes please oh my god please do it I'm such a dumb like sighted person so there's like legally blind and then there's blind and I would okay. just be blind oh really mm -hmm. what's the difference so legally blind Blind is when you're 20 over 200, which means what you could see from 200 feet away, that person would have to be 20 feet away from. Oh. And so that's legally blind. And basically all legally blind means is you can't drive a car. Really? Yeah. I guess I have heard like old people be like, well, I'm legally blind now. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, like they've hit that and point. I'm like, what? And then it goes down from there. Okay. So like it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And so when you just use the term legally blind, that would reference that I have, see a lot more than I do. Okay. And especially because I quote look sighted, it like would throw a lot of people off. Okay. Versus just saying like I'm blind. Got it's it. It's just like you're just you're I'm blind. just blind. I'm okay. not like legally blind where there's a lot of room to see potentially. Okay. Got it. And so even though I'm considered totally blind because I can't like read, see colors, look at the world around me, I still can see light and shadow. Yeah, I've seen that. I've heard I've heard you talk about that in videos before. I love glitter. Yes. See, this is why I want to have this conversation with Molly because I am ignorant and naive to the blind community and what it's like. And but you what admit that. Oh, which is 100%. awesome. I am so stupid when it comes to this, and I don't want to be. I, you know, I want to know you know, what questions to ask, what questions not to ask, and just be educated on it. I was talking about this with Molly the other day, but I have a deaf brother. I know what it's like to, you know, have my brother be part of the deaf community and missing one of his senses, but I've never hung out with or known a blind person, and I wanted to know. We're really rare. <laughs> We're a rare breed. <laughs> but I think it would be good for you guys to listen to and know, um, just educate yourselves more on it, because I feel like that's the number one problem with it. All of mm -hmm. this is that people just have no idea and just uneducated on what and when you're when you don't know you're scared and that's the biggest thing is when when people don't know they're scared of offending you or saying the wrong mm -hmm. thing so they just avoid you blindness is already so isolating because you're missing so much connectivity with the world around you mm -hmm. to then have people like avoid you or tiptoe around you is the last thing we want we can't make eye contact with you across the room at a party and start chatting we need people to come up to approach us to make conversation but when people are ignorant and scared and have never met a blind person they're scared and they avoid us yeah, and right. that sucks what my whole channel is you know devoted to doing is breaking the stigma breaking the stereotype breaking the wall down and saying like let's have a conversation about right. it let's talk about it ask right. me questions I was so angry at society's ignorance that I was like I can't just sit and be angry I need to do something yeah so I chose to actively dedicate myself to educating and then I can't be mad when people are ignorant because I'm actively changing that problem right the thing is like that's not every blind person's passion mm -hmm. that's not what every blind person feels like their mission on earth is to do so i don't think it's appropriate to go up and feel like you can ask every blind person a question sometimes you just want to cross the street and grab your coffee like you, you that's not your passion is not talking about your disability all the time right but it is mine well i'm gonna ask you all the stupid questions do it it's not like i want to sit and only talk about your blindness mm -hmm. every time i'm around you like that's not what i want to do but there are things i'm like i wish I knew what I could say and what I couldn't say like because like you said people are scared of offending Yes, and I would never want to offend you Which I feel like is why so many people will even still say like visually impaired They avoid saying like the B word like people are scared. Oh, really? of it. Yeah, people are scared of the word blind and it's really funny Even my parents when they were raising me were scared of it. One of my um, blind friends her mom just told my mom straight up, like, look, you just need to say it. Like, yeah. rip the band-aid off. Because people don't understand when you don't use that mm -hmm. word. 
and when you've never met a blind person and you see me and all you've ever seen is people in movies wearing dark sunglasses yeah. and being completely incapable and reliant on others, you're like, she's not blind. Which is not true, she is blind. So one of the first questions I had for Molly about all of this was my brother, like I said, is, um, well, was deaf, now he's a cochlear implant. He's always you know, been hard of hearing and then eventually went deaf and then got his cochlear implant. So I have been around deaf people in the deaf community and I know it's totally different being deaf and blind. They're like so different. There's like nothing you can compare. They're like compare. the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing you can compare is that they both are something where you lose one of your one senses. One of your main senses. But I have noticed the deaf community is really, really proud for the most part of being deaf. Like it's a community, it's a culture. And I think that's really cool that they mm -hmm. are proud of something that, you know, a lot of society would call a disability. They are like, no, it's not a disability. This is who right. I am. And so I was curious if the blind community was like that as well. So the deaf community is a lot larger than the blind community. Mm -hmm. It's a much more, I think, there is 10 times more deaf people than blind people. Wow. Was the last time I heard, like I could be wrong. We don't have as strong a community mm -hmm. because there's just not enough of us. It's challenging because mm -hmm. when you don't grow up seeing yourself in the media and then you don't grow up seeing yourself at school or at the mall or at the airport or at restaurants and you don't have a really strong community of people like you, it, it can feel like you are the only you and you are mm -hmm. very isolated, which is another reason I'm so passionate about making videos right. and building that community online for people who can't find it in real life. I bet that's helped a lot. I bet making the videos, has, has it opened up a whole new like community for you? Yeah, like, my you... parents worked really hard to immerse me in the blind community from the time I was diagnosed with my eye disease when I was four. Mm -hmm. So I was lucky enough to have a small community, but at least a community. Mm -hmm. But I've had so many people find my videos and reach out saying, I know nobody else who's blind. That is really touching for me because I know growing up how isolated and alone I felt and I had a community. Yeah. So it's rewarding to feel like I can help other people in my situation right. feel less alone. In terms of like the pride aspect of it, I would say when I was growing up, I really subscribed to the medical model of disability, the idea of, of a cure is the only way you'll be successful and happy mm. and fit into society. And I really believed that I needed to be cured to be happy. It almost upset me that the deaf community was, you know, kind of against cochlear implants and, mm -hmm. and wasn't really accepting of this, quote, cure of some sorts. Yeah. And um, I was like, they're so lucky. There's nothing for me. There's nothing for my disease. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to help me see. As I've grown up, I've actually really changed my mindset. And I am now the first to say that I don't want to be cured. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy. Cured, and quote well, unquote. Yeah, quote, as cured, as, yeah. exactly. I'm happy as I am. And I'm, ex I'm accepting of who I am. Mm -hmm. And now I look to kind of the deaf community and the pride they have and the fact that they truly don't view it as a disability in general. And I'm like, you go, like that's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. I want to empower more, more communities within disability to feel that way, yes. to yeah. feel that self-love, to feel that pride, to feel that strength and to, to find the positives mm -hmm. in what so much of society would view as a negative. We'll get into like the most ignorant question, or not okay. ignorant, but probably maybe the most annoying question. Okay. Cause I know like you get asked like, how do you do your makeup? Which you guys can go watch your video on that. Cause we don't need to sit here and like have you explain yeah. that over and over. But there are some little dumb things. Like when I knew Molly was gonna come over to film, I was changing Flynn's diaper and I was like, oh my God, this is an ex insane poop explosion everywhere. How would a blind mom or blind dad change their baby's poopy? Like, would they just get poop everywhere? So there's a bunch of like little questions yeah. like that. And that's the kind of stuff I'm interested in is like, I guess no one uses like ATM machines anymore, but I've always noticed there's Braille on mm -hmm. the numbers, but then not on the screen. There's no way to read the screen. Well, a lot of them will actually have a headphone jack. So really? You put your headphones in and it, once you put the headphones in, it, it automatically starts to talk like it turns on that feature really yeah so another thing is like I feel like now it, it there's a lot more technology to help yeah. someone who's blind than there was even five ten years ago we all talk about how much technology has changed over the years mm -hmm. for the blind community it's like that times ten like the difference of where it was 10 years ago when I lost most of my vision to where it is now is like astronomical. Yeah, because it's everything wild. is like, can become like what, like yeah, your text, everything, sure. can everything talk is, now. is read to you or yeah. you know, talk to you. Sight is the sense you rely on the most. Mm -hmm. 
It is your number one sense. When you have all five senses, or six, depending on what you believe, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> sight is the one you use the most to do everything. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of things that sighted people cannot imagine doing without sight. But right. if you have to, you just do it. I know, right? But it's, it's fascinating. There's so many things that you guys do that I'm like, you use sight for that? That's ridiculous. I know, because like, I, I have to use sight for that. To me, it's like you're a magician. <laughs> I feel like you're like a superhuman. When girl, my girlfriends like open their handbag and physically look inside of it, I'm like, are you kidding me? Just stick your hand in. <laughs> well, she Nothing is. else feels like your keys in there. I swear. Like, put your hand in and you'll find it faster. Yeah, I was and they'll be rooting around and can't that, find it. And I'm like. See exactly. Well, that's that was what happened. She she was snapping up Flynn's clothes, and I was like, "Oh, these snaps—they're so hard to snap back together." I'm, you know, I was like making a big deal of it because every time I snap his clothes back together, I always like miss a button. They're like, like out of line. Out of line. And she did it so easily and so quickly because she wasn't looking. She was doing it with her, all feel with feeling. And I was like, "Oh my god, I've been doing it wrong this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew." There's so many things like that that I'm mm -hmm. just so curious about. So like. You could see up until right. you were four. Could you fully see, or is that when you, you were diagnosed and then it slowly mm -hmm. went away after that? So I've always been legally blind. Okay. So I've never had better than 20 over 200. Okay. And did your parents know that when you were born? No. So the first warning sign was when I was six months old and my head was constantly shaking. So you'll probably notice my eyes always shake. Mm -hmm. I can't stop it. It's just always happened. My head would also shake like that. Oh, okay. And my grandpa was like, you should take her to a doctor this isn't normal. My parents took me to a neurologist at Sickett's Hospital, which is a brain doctor. I was diagnosed with spasmic newtons, and uh, it's a brain condition that I believe about one in one million babies are born with, so I'm literally one in a million, no big deal, and they oh said she'll grow out of it. My doctors ultimately called my full diagnosis a dramatic diagnosis because I have a number of different diseases that are really rare and that aren't typically coupled together. Is there any reason why you are born? It just, for no, it just, I'm just lucky. You're just awesome? Yeah, I'm just lucky. <laughs> and so it made it so complicated because they would diagnose me with something and I did have that thing but it wasn't the whole truth. Mm -hmm. There was more to it. And so when I was four, I was finally diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa. So there's a lot of people who want that dramatic, like what was the last thing you ever saw kind of moment. Mm -hmm. But that does happen to some people, say like a surgery goes wrong, they have a car accident, something like that. But for somebody like me, that's not how it happened. So I don't have that like, oh my God, I woke up blind one morning and it was right. terrifying. I always knew I was gonna go blind. Mm -hmm. I, I think my parents first told me when I was about five or six years old. Like, I knew I was different. And so I asked and they told me and I started public speaking about my disease and doing media interviews when I was five. And what? so, yeah, so I grew up talking about it my whole life. I have a, a speech on my channel that I gave when I was 10. I it's so stinking cute. Oh and, my God. And in the video, I talk about how I want to be an actress and a model. So this has been- I like, love this. There's so many people who are like, oh, she's just a YouTuber because she's blind. I'm like, no, this is like who I am. Yeah. Like going blind didn't change who I am. I love fashion. And I love ew, makeup. who's saying that? Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> right? And when people are like, she's only successful on YouTube because she's blind, I'm like, I don't know if you noticed that 99.9% .9 of all other YouTubers are sighted. So <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> if anything, I had it going against me. For me, I knew it was gonna happen and I would tell people like, I have this disease and one day I'm gonna go blind and all of these things, but those are just words. Mm -hmm. Until it's real, those are just words. I always consider myself to have been sighted. Mm -hmm. Like I talk about myself uh, through childhood as, as if I was fully sighted, even though I wasn't. What I saw then was all I knew, mm -hmm. so it was sight. I played competitive soccer on a sighted team. I was a competitive dancer on a sighted team. Mm -hmm. Like I lived a sighted life. I read print, I saw colors, I saw faces. To me, I, I was sighted. It's kind of like how we all know that our parent, like our mom or our dad will most likely die before we will. Mm -hmm. We know that, but until it happens, we don't know how sad we'll feel. Right. We don't know how angry we'll feel. We, we don't know how long we'll lay in bed crying. We don't know how we'll deal with it. And so that's like me. It's like I always knew it, but you're never prepared for what mm -hmm. it's gonna feel like. And so when it did happen, I went from being this like super bubbly outgoing person we see now mm -hmm. to being extremely depressed, very angry. I dealt with self-harm, suicidal ideation. Mm -hmm. I was in a really bad place. I lost all my friends. Went from being like a pretty popular kid to having no friends and being horribly bullied. It was a, like something I wish on nobody. So it was, it was really tough. And it was, you know, a, a journey, a process to get to where I am in my life now and the self-love and acceptance um, and success and joy that I have uh, in my life. Oh my gosh, I'm getting so inspired. I feel like I'm having like, 
you do one of your speeches like just to me right now on this on this couch and I'm like oh my god I'm so inspired so there is something and I know you've explained this in your videos mm -hmm. I don't know I just feel like you're very good at fashion thank you how does a blind person like explain to the audience how does a blind person mm -hmm. like decide what to wear or go shopping or all of that stuff like explain so I've done some videos where I actually like specifically show how I shop, I've done videos showing how I pair outfits from my closet. Basically, like I said earlier, going blind doesn't change who you are, it changes how you do things. Mm -hmm. So for me, I grew up obsessed with makeup and fashion, mm -hmm. just like I grew up obsessed with performing on stage. And mm -hmm. For me, it wasn't like, oh, I'm just gonna stop caring about makeup and fashion now that I can't see it. It was just like, okay, how am I yeah. going to figure, figure it this out? Way, yeah. Which is actually how I got into watching YouTube. When I had no friends left, no girlfriends to go shopping with, or like talk about makeup with, I found the beauty community back mm -hmm. in like 2008, 2009. I found Who are you watching? Beauty like Michelle Fawn and like. I watched, so my, the first girls I watched were Blair Fowler, Jessica okay. Star yep. Seven, uh -huh. Bethany Moda, oh Mac Barbie Oh my Garbio gosh, Seven, okay. And um, Megan Hart's makeup, Megan oh Hart. Oh my god. Those were like the three girls, because they were all like right around my age. Mm -hmm. So I like felt really connected. They felt like my girlfriends, they felt yeah. like my sisters, which mm -hmm. is kind of. Part of why I wanted to start YouTube when I got older. I would listen to them describe clothes that they bought in a haul, or do outfit of the day, or do like a makeup tutorial, or like top five favorite MAC lipsticks, fair skin, or like whatever it was, and I would yeah. like go out and buy that like angel lipstick. I just learned to do everything by feel. My eyes are my hands. So like for me, everything I see through touch and through hearing. So I say that I watched the movie, but really I listened to it. Mm -hmm. So when I say like, oh, I saw this cute shirt at the mall, well, I felt that cute shirt. Mm -hmm. Self promo, I guess, but I have a Netflix show. Um, but I remember one time I was uh, watching one of the episodes, like when it first came out, and somehow the feature had turned on. Mm -hmm. On the description. Which I had never heard of before. I had never heard of that. I didn't know that existed. I guess my ignorant brain just always assumed blind people when they watch things just listen to what I listen right. to. And so I was curious, do you use that? Mm -hmm. Because it literally was like, you know, I'm watching and I'm watching myself as Miranda and then it's all of a sudden I hear like, Miranda stands up and walks across to Patrick or whatever right, and, it was, right. and it was explaining what was going on. I was like, what is happening? And I was so confused by like this extra you know, right, description. Audio of, track. And I was like, wait, is this how blind people watch? movies and television like do you use that so growing up it didn't really exist i would just figure out which tv shows were naturally more descriptive which tended to be a lot of medical shows crime shows documentaries they're just mm -hmm. more descriptive or i'd watch it if it wasn't kind of naturally descriptive i would watch it with like a friend or family member and they would describe it and then movie theaters started integrating it they would offer headsets for some of their movies so i started kind of getting a taste for it for me netflix is they offer audio description on all of their Netflix originals. And no, is that how you watch hands it? Hands down, I do, I do. And once I've watched the whole series with it, I just can't watch one without. I like, I only now watch the shows they offer it. They do it for some of their licensed programming, but not all of it, but it's on all of their originals. I used to be like, I'm not missing out on much. And now that I watch it with it, I'm right. like, I was missing out on so much. See, what's so interesting is like when that happened on my show and I was watching it, I was like, oh my gosh, how could anyone watch this? It's so distracting is how I noticed it. Right. But at the same time, since my brother was deaf, I grew up with closed caption. Right. So I cannot watch a movie or television show without closed caption because that's how I was raised watching television and movies. Right. So even though I'm not deaf and I don't depend on it to hear what's going on, I have to read it in order to, under it's like I can't understand them unless I'm reading it. Like if I watch a movie. Right, because that's what you were raised, that's, how that's I, what you know. That's how I learned to yeah. watch television and movies. So when other people come over and they see captions on my television, they're like, oh, how are you watching this? It's so distracting. Like all I can do is read it. So I guess it's the same where yeah. it's like, that's all I ever knew. So to me, it's not distracting. To me, it would be distracting if it wasn't on. Right, and for me, it's like I miss so much when I don't have mm -hmm. it that like it's just a vital part of my watching experience. Is it always like the same type of like a voice? Do you think they like find actors to do this who kind of match the theme of like, so if it was like Harry Potter, would it be someone, you know what I mean? It's like, always a very neutral voice. It is, okay. It doesn't add any color to okay, it. I okay. wouldn't necessarily say, 
they're like voice acting. Okay, so it's, it's, it's definitely just neutral. like a very blunt read. It's because I guess that makes more sense anyway because you wouldn't want it to be confused with the story. A character. What's the most annoying question that someone asks you? I mean, I have a couple videos on. I know you do. Questions not a blind person. I know, I know you do. Uh, which you guys can go watch. Check out. And I do it, encourage yeah. people to always ask questions. But I want to know like the mo the one that like just grinds your gears, or is it more of an attitude? Like if people talk to you like you're, a, you know. Oh God, when people talk to whoever I'm with like if we went to grab coffee and they went to you and said what does she want and I'm standing right that here that is so obnoxious that's <laughs> super annoying especially when I answer the question but then they keep asking the other person uh -huh. is if I'm not answering right. I personally don't like it's like controversial I don't like when people say can I pray for you I know. Well, okay. Because, yeah, I, no, I totally understand what you're saying. It's a condes. Okay, so I grew a, up. It feels condescending. I to very me. much grew up in the church, and there are two ways to say that. There's yeah. a way to say that that's like you can tell it's like genuine, and someone's just like, I just want to pray for you because like I love you, and right, I want to talk like, about you. But when they say, but like, when can it, I pray for your healing? Yes. Now that I am happy as my, as I am and I don't want to be cured, I find it offensive that society assumes I should be cured. Yes. And that society like thinks I should want that. Like I'm like. Who are you to say that my life would be better if I was cured? Yeah. So for you to be like, can I pray for you to be healed? And kind of says that like I am broken. And I think it's kind of silly when people are like, have you seen a nutritionist? <laughs> like I'm like, are you kidding me? It's kind of funny to me, and I and oh I get it God. when people are like, I have a doctor for you, and I'm like, no, you don't. Like trust me, oh, I know man. about everything going That's on in so this funny. medical field of research for my disease. You don't have a doctor that'll cure me. I know that for sure. That's certain. like when okay, it's not it's not the same, but I understand the sentiment because when my son had colic for a couple of months, which is where the baby just cries twenty four seven and like there's not really anything you can do to help. Um, I talked about it finally online, and a bunch of people were messaging me, being like, "Did you try breastfeeding?" I was like, "No, I've just starved my baby. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> what do you mean if I tried breastfeeding? Like, <laughs> yes, I feed my child. It's not." because he's hungry yeah you know um so I, I like when people give uneducated opinions on things like that again i feel like i have to apologize before my ignorant questions but i'm sorry if this is i'm inviting ignorant. you to do it, i know so. okay so like every blind person is you know every person's sight journey or blind journey is very different yes right so like how much you can see you know shadows and right is different than another blind person none of us will ever see the same exactly and it's very frustrating when people click, I had one person comment on an Instagram and say, she's not blind, my aunt's blind, and she can't look at the camera. Right. And I was like, so you know one blind person and who can't do something that I can do. So but I probably can't do things she can do. Right, like, exactly. We're humans, we so, have all different abilities. I guess this, I don't know that you could even answer this question, but for like you, like I didn't know when you came in if I would have to like explain where to walk or, you know, to, or but then I also know that you could see like lights, if like there's light coming through the windows right. or, you know. Whatever. So I, whenever like I meet somebody, they're like, can we take a photo? I'm like, ooh, let's face this way so we get the best right. light because light's all I can see and I know like if we face the light, the photo's better. Is it appropriate to ask like a blind person, like for example, when you were here, you said, where is your bathroom? I didn't yeah. just go like, oh, you just walk down there and you turn left and you turn right. I like walked with Brought you. Me to it, yeah. I didn't like hold your hand, but I walked with you. Right. And I assumed that was the appropriate thing to do, but I didn't know. And what the thing it... is, if I need help, I'll ask. So if so, I'm like, like your space is very open. Uh -huh. So I knew I wasn't gonna walk into anything. If I felt like your space was more crowded, I would say, hey, could you guide me? And I would grab your elbow okay. and have you actually physically guide me through. Cause Please. my brain went through okay well obviously she doesn't know my house so i'll just walk next to her and like talk her talk to her while we walk over there but then while i was doing it, i was like wait is this offensive of me being like assuming she needs my help to get there as opposed to me just telling her where to no, go no definitely like it's super helpful i think at the end of the day we will ask for help when we need it one thing that is important to note is is that you know i do a lot of talking about my situation on my channel, in this video, on the internet in general, but I am not all blind people. I am Molly and I am blind and I'm sharing my experience being in this community. But just because I can do something, doesn't mean all blind people can. But yeah, like we're, we'll, we'll verbalize if you're doing something wrong, generally we will, I will for sure. Verbalize if you're doing something wrong, if we need extra help, if you're doing something right. Um, but yeah, bird box challenge was definitely to to me very frustrating, dangerous, offensive. It was very frustrating. Well, yeah, of course. Like that's... I went on a whole Twitter rant. Yeah, as you should. That's... Twitter's where I rant. Like if you ever me want to too. be a part of my rant, you can go to Twitter. <laughs> like that is where you'll find it. I think the biggest thing to learn is like not to treat blind people 
like they're severely disabled mm -hmm. or like there's something wrong with them. I think is the most important thing. And to ask questions, admit like, I don't know and I'm only asking this because I feel ignorant about it. Right. As opposed to just assuming negative things about blind people or assuming, you know, I don't know. Is that, I, I feel like that would be the best takeaway for someone. I want everybody to know that you know, love and self-acceptance is really important mm -hmm. and they are whole and good enough as they are and as who they are and that we're all humans and mm -hmm. we all deserve to be treated as equals. Mm -hmm. So much of society views me as less than, mm -hmm. expects less of me, thinks I'll be less capable and I want to change that for other disabled people. Yeah. Whether they're blind or, or whatever other disability it is that, you know, we're humans and we have the same heart, we, we care about the same things, we're intelligent, we're capable, um, and we deserve opportunity. So often I'll get comments that are like, oh my God, I don't know how she went through what she went through. Like, I would just I would just die if I went blind. And I'm like, actually you wouldn't, you would just figure it out, Yeah. right? Like when life hands you a situation, you just handle it because that's your only option. Mm -hmm. Listen to this public speaker <laughs> over here, just inspirational speaker for everyone. Um, make sure to go check out Molly. Check out the video we did together on her channel. because it, it was so fun. Amazing. <laughs> um, and there's going to be a lot more for me and Molly in the future because we have- And me and Miranda. Ones. Yes. Because um, I'm going to have to come up with a thousand questions right when you leave. But good news is I can just find the answer now on you can your just YouTube channel. Or, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm so excited. Oh, actually I did have one other thing I wanted to say. Um, so the, before you came over the first time, I took a picture of Flynn, of him smiling. Mm -hmm. And I almost texted to you to say, oh my gosh, look, Flynn's so excited. To, to meet you and I was like because that's you know I've done it with a few of my friends and I was like wait she can't see a picture of Flynn yeah so and I phones don't describe photos right so I was like what do I I can't send her a picture yeah and so I you'll notice on my Instagram I do hashtag accessibility photo description so on all of my Instagram photos I include a photo description oh so you could just send it to me and be like look Flynn's so excited to see you and then put in brackets like photo of Flynn smiling at the camera look at that I never would have yeah. thought to do that Okay, so if I ever want to send you a picture or like a, just a GIF or whatever, give I like can a little explanation. Explanation of what mm -hmm. it is. Okay, I just thought of another question that I really wanted to ask Molly. <laughs> a lot of people do videos with you. Yes. And it's never Molly and I, blah, 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 blah. It's always right. blind person. Right. Is that, does that offend you? I did a whole video, t I think it was titled like, I'm the blind girl in every YouTuber's video. Yes. My followers get more offended by it than I do. Okay. So the th I think the best way to do it is being like, like say like asking a blind girl offensive questions with Molly Burke. Here's my thing. I'm blind. Mm -hmm. Right? But it's not who you are. You but are it Molly. Isn't, it isn't who I am. But this is an industry. This is a career. This is a job. Mm -hmm. That's clickable. And my thing is I would <laughs> rather people click on the video and watch it because then they get to be educated. Yes. Understood. Thank you. No need to be offended for me, but I appreciate you stick it, stick it up for me. See, I, I'm already coming up with more questions to ask you, but I will just have to do another video, part two. We'll do an mm -hmm. actual mukbang and we'll Ooh, eat food, food. and um, yeah. So anyway, I love you. Thanks for coming Thank and chatting you. with everyone. And she's been very patient with me and my son too, because being a mom is hard making a schedule. I don't know happen. how, you, I, like I said, I literally don't know how you do it. <laughs> well, girl, I don't either because I'm very tired. But um, subscribe to her, make sure to leave a comment below, and uh, hopefully this has helped you guys uh, open up your eyes a little bit to... No pun intended. No pun intended <laughs> uh, to the blind community, what it maybe is like a little bit to be blind and what questions, if maybe we answered some of your questions today and if we yeah. didn't, go check out her channel because I'm already thinking of a thousand more questions. All right. Love you guys. See Bye. you soon. Bye.